I'm here this morning at the European Parliament with Mr. Prentice de Rossa, Labour MEP for Dublin. Now I'm going to put a question to Mr. de Rossa on climate change. Good morning, Mr. De Rossa. Good morning. One of the big debates at the moment is climate change. Now, can you tell me why are we still bothering about climate change when we have such a big financial crisis on our doorstep? Well, first of all, uh, the cli clim climate change issue is not going to go away simply because we have a financial crisis. Uh, and secondly, uh, this is an opportunity to do the things we have to do in any event. And that is, in other words, to re-engineer our uh, industrial base, to turn it more towards green uh, jobs towards uh, ensuring, for instance, the automobile industry uh, should be using new tech, tech, tech non technology that is already available to produce cars that are that produce less CO2 emissions. Uh, this is po possible now. Um, there is a need for inve inve investment in order to ensure that the energy we produce is not um, pol 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 polluting our environment. Um, this, uh, this technology is also av available now, but it needs to be encouraged because, of course, um, the companies who have the resources to uh, I I invest in this are now saying, well, we're not going to do it now because it's too expensive because oil has gone, gone down and therefore it makes it less um, uh, mar makes uh, clean energy less marketable. So we need to find ways of encouraging them to uh, ensure that we use the current current uh, crisis to um, switch our economy to a, a, towards a green economy. Um, so it, this is the financial crisis in fact is an opportunity in terms of dealing with climate change. Now what is the European Parliament doing on this issue? There's a lot of talk about it here in the Parliament and um, there was a committee on climate change. So what exactly has come out of all of these discussions? Well, one of the most important things the Parliament has done is approved last December um, the uh, what's known as the 2020-20 package, that is to um, re reduce CO2 emissions by 20% uh, by the year 2020. It also uh, agreed uh, various other um, uh, agreements in relation to cap and trade, in relation to C C C C CO2. Uh, it um, set standards on CO2 emissions for uh, for for cars, um, but uh, this is uh, not enough. Uh, as far as the socialist group in the European Parliament here is concerned, we are arguing that the Copenhagen Summit, the UN Copenhagen Summit on Climate Change, which takes place in December uh, this year, um, that we should have an objective there of uh, having a 30% reduction in CO2 emissions. That We're arguing that the European Union should, should in fact lead uh, the fight against climate change at that conference and I think if the European Union having adopted its own package uh, has strengthened its hand to be able to go into that uh, conference next December and argue that more should be done. Now what would you say to those scientists that have come out saying that it's too late or nothing can be done? What, what would you say to them? Well, there are a minority of scientists who make this argument. However, the vast majority of scientists who are involved in this area have declared that uh, there is a serious problem if we don't take steps um, to uh, mitigate um, cl climate change. We're not going to be able to el eliminate it. That, that's impossible. But we have to try and keep it with, with, within bounds. If we don't do that, the costs of, for instance, uh, uh, of populations move, move, moving, of uh, massive uh, mig migrations occurring, the loss of um, uh, uh, pre pre production of land, all of these things uh, will have a huge impact on society uh, if we don't take steps now. It's costly to do it now, but it will be even more costly to do it in 10 or 15 or 20 years' time. Thank you very much, Mr. DeRosa.